Hi guys, this is John from Sonic Drive Studio. Welcome to episode 3 of our drum mixing series. In the previous episodes we talked about the Stephen Slade drums, David Bendeth expansion and the Terry Date pack. And in this episode we're going to take a look at the more raw deluxe samples from Stephen Slade Drums 4. Before we do that, I'd like to ask you to hit subscribe and you can also follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. Alright, so over here we have Stephen Slade Drums 4 set up. For these deluxe samples, it's important to keep in mind that there's no processing on them already. They were just recorded very well. So they sound great out of the box, but they do benefit from some processing. So these are the samples that I've chosen. In the deluxe pack, there are a lot of samples to choose from. So I had to make a selection, of course, and I made a selection based on the sounds that I usually like to do, which is rock music. But these drum sounds can also be very useful in pop. So it's a very general sound in that sense. Again, I have the same drum loop set up as the previous two videos. So we can just take a listen to these drums with processing first. Here we go. Yeah, so that's a great, big, warm and round sound. I love it. Now let's also listen to these drums without processing, to hear what a difference the processing makes. With the rawness of these samples, I hope the mixing tips in this video will be of more help when you're mixing real drums. And again, for comparison, a very quick section with processing. Okay, so quite a big difference there. Let's go over the processing and the settings. If you'd like to know what kind of processing I'm doing on the Master Fader, be sure to check out episode 1 about the David Bendeth pack. I go over the Master Fader settings in that video. And the Master Fader settings are the same for every episode in this mixing series. We're gonna start off by checking out the kick drum. Let's check out a small part soloed. It's a nice punchy big kick sound. I love this Yamaha kick. Now without processing. And again with processing. So with processing the kick gains a lot of weight and clarity. And with the processing turned off it sounds a bit boxy. Okay, so let's look at the processing. Just like in my previous videos, I have the trimmer and the virtual preamp set up in the first virtual mix rack instance. Then again, virtual tape machines as always. Okay, so what am I doing here? First up, just as with all the other channels, I have virtual channels set up from the virtual console collection. Um, and then we have FGS here, which is doing a lot of the EQ on this track. I'm boosting some highs, adding some presence and slap to the kick, and I'm cutting quite a lot of low mids here. Let's AB this. So by cutting these low mid frequencies, we're making a lot of room for other instruments. As you can hear, that area doesn't sound very pleasing in the kick drum, at least for a rock and pop genre. If you want your kick drum to sound big and have punch, definitely look out for this area. Then I'm using Custom Series Lift again. Like I said in my other videos, I love this plugin, it's just amazing. I'm boosting some extra highs and a slight bit of lows. 
Let's AB this plugin. So it's adding some nice presence there and a little bit of low end. Okay, and next up we have the Monster again, as I've been using in my other videos a lot. It's an amazing plugin. I love to use this on closed mic drums, but also on room channels and the drum bus. If you don't own this plugin, I recommend getting it because it's free. Note that I have the mix knob set at only 11%. Let's do a quick AB. So it makes the kick sound a bit fatter and it brings it forward more. That's all that I'm doing on the kick drum. Let's go over to the snare. Let's take a listen. And without processing. So just as with the kick drum, the sound is greatly enhanced by the processing. It's a very well recorded snare, so we don't have to do a lot of surgical stuff to fix things, but we can definitely enhance it. Let's take a look at what we're doing here. First in the chain is the monster again, adding some bigness to the snare. I have the mix set at about 19%. I base the settings on the snare slammer preset. Great preset. Let's AB this one. So it's adding a lot of sustain and size to this snare. I love it. Then again, the custom series lift, doing uh, most of the EQing on this snare. Let's AB this one. So this one's making a huge difference, adding both size and presence to the snare. And finally, to add even more presence, I'm using air here. I'm only adding about 1 dB. Let's AB this one too. I also really like what that's doing. I really love using this on snare drums. And finally, we have FG Bomber set up here, just to make the snare a little bit more punchy and to let it cut out of the mix even more. Let's AB this. I found that the difference that this effect makes is way more noticeable in the mix. So try this one while all the other instruments are playing, and you'll see that this plugin really helps to make your instruments jump out of the mix more. Finally, I'm doing some slight surgical EQing here with Air EQ from Aosis. Let's just see what I'm doing there. So there's just some low mid resonance going on there. When I added all this processing, uh, the drums were inside a real mix and I noticed that that frequency was just sounding a bit unpleasant for me. I really like to use the Aosis Air EQ for doing surgical cuts and boosts. It's a wonderful sounding plugin. I highly recommend checking this one out too. And then finally, I'm sending the snare to a reverb channel, which I have set up over here. Again, I'm using LX480 right now. Over here you can see the basic settings. Let's do a quick AB. It makes the snare sound a bit more roomy. 
Now for the Tom group. Let's see what I'm doing here. With FGS here, I'm cutting out a healthy amount of mids at about 530 hertz. This removes some unnecessary boxiness. Just as with a kick drum, removing this area makes the tom sound bigger and gives them more punch. And I'm also adding some highs with the high shelf at about 10K, adding about 4.5 dBs. I'm also filtering out some low end under about 50 hertz. We're leaving that area for the kick drum and bass guitar. Let's AB this plugin. So with the processing here, they sound better in the mix, adding more clarity and removing some muddiness. Next up, I'm using FG401 just to glue the toms together a bit and even out the dynamics. Let's AB this one. And just as with the previous two channels, again, I'm using the high and low lift, adding some body here and adding some presence with the high lift. Let's AB this one. Just giving them some more size and letting them jump out of the mix more. I'm not doing anything with the hi-hat. And then for the overhead channels, let's take a listen. And without the processing. Processing on these channels are just there to keep them in check so that they don't become overly harsh in the mix. I'm removing some high end here with the high shelf on FGS. Also cutting out some boxy mids at around 500 hertz again. And I'm using FG401 here again to even out the dynamics of the overheads a little bit. Great sounding overhead mics. And finally the room mics. Let's take a listen. And without processing. One thing that you may be noticing here is that the kick drum doesn't sound loud at all. That is because I turned it down in the Steven Slade drums mixer. Over here you have the bleed level control. And I just turned down the room control for the kick drum here. I like the sound better with the kick drum room turned down with these samples. Okay, let's look at the processing. First up we have Air EQ. Surgically cutting out some 500 hertz. Let's see what that frequency is doing. Again, this was a decision that I made during the mixing process in a full band context. And we have the monster set up again. It's so amazing on room mics. Let's AB this one real quickly. It just makes the snare drum sound explosive. I love it. Then finally, let's take a look at the drum bus. These settings are basically the same as with the other two videos. Just using a bit of monster to enhance the sustain and impact of the drums. And FG Gray to keep everything in check. Let's AB the inserts on this channel. adding some life and size to the drums. Great. Now I'd like to share one little cool trick with you guys. Because these samples can sound a bit raw, 
that can benefit from some enhancement by adding samples. So one thing that I like to do to give the snare more crack and presence is add the snare black from the SSD4 classic signature folder. Just throw it in here. Then you have to make sure that these new drums are sent to the proper channels. I'm going to turn the direct mic down quite a bit. Let's listen to how it sounds now. I like what that's adding to this snare. Of course you may need to go back to your snare channel and adjust some EQ. Now if you want this to sound even bigger, go to your bleed level and turn up the room here. The room sound on that black snare is amazing. So it's great for augmenting your snare. Okay, that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this. Again, I would hugely appreciate it if you could hit subscribe and follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. See ya!